He is the co-host of Fox Sports 1 Live on FS1 every weeknight at 11 Eastern. Co-host of the Jay and Dan podcast, available, well, where any good podcaster downloaded for free. Also the author of two books, Anchor Boy, and number two, he's also the only Fox... Did you write this, Jay? You yes. did. You did write this. We have no more PR people at FS1. <laughs> They've all been fired. <laughs> Budgetary cuts. The only... F- oh, okay, wait a minute. Here we go. The only Fox Sports employee who was not at the Super Bowl, and he's not bitter about it. It's true. No, sir, ladies not and gentlemen. Bitter. It's Jay Onright. Yes. I was Thanks going with, with the French version. I thought... Oh, yeah. Uh, Jay Onright. Oh, that. Onright. Yeah, oh, that. But you're from Canada. Yes, yeah. What? I am, but are I'm you... from Western Canada, so it's like being from the Midwest, basically. Are you from, like, Banff? Or... I'm from Edmonton. Oh, home oh of, my goodness. Home of the worst NHL team in the world right now, the Oilers. Edmonton? Yeah, what a town. <laughs> <laughs> if we went to Edmonton? Yeah. Oh, we'd have a good time. Oh, we'd have fun. We how should do famous, the show there. How famous are you in Edmonton? Pretty famous. Dan, I'm pretty. I'm a megastar in Canada, so all over the country. Gretzky is in Edmonton? Yep. On one side of the street. Correct. You're on the other side of the street. Gret- there's a Wayne Gretzky drive, and then they were like, who do they name the airport after? They went with me. <laughs> they- <laughs> <laughs> well, so you got your start in Edmonton? I got my start in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I made my way all across the country. And then I went to Winnipeg, home of the Jets. Yeah. And the guess who? Burton Cummings. <laughs> and then- <laughs> No sugar tonight? No sugar tonight. No coffee. That's right. Yeah. We've come undone. <laughs> and uh, and then went to Toronto to TSN. But when you got to TSN, and how long after that did you pair up with uh, Dan? Right away, we were. I was there for a year, and then Dan showed up a year later. Uh, he had come from Vancouver, and like all Vancouverites, he was lamenting the fact that he was leaving this beautiful city. Uh, spent the first month uh, that I was there looking at the Weather Channel website, <laughs> live shots of uh, Whistler. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You're pathetic. When did you guys know? Like you had something there. Um, I right away. I mean, right away we kind of knew. Okay, we we both have the same philosophy about this show. We knew pretty early on that that the streaming world was coming, and that we had to bring a little personality to the mix, or there would be probably little reason to continue to watch us. Plus, um, there were way more attractive people on TSN than us. <laughs> way more. I mean, I know that's not saying much, but but there were way more attractive people. So yeah, we. We sort of decided let's let the personalities come out a little bit, and uh, it worked out. But management didn't – did they encourage you guys to be goofballs? They were more – it was more um, – we, we'd always get an email from our boss, Mark Millier. He would say uh, – I we'd always know if we'd gone too far. He, he would send us an email in the morning that would say, dial it back 10%. <laughs> this isn't the Ha Ha Hut. The Ha Ha Hut was his fictional comedy club. <laughs> I don't know where he'd maybe gone to a ha ha hut in Hamilton or something yeah. like that. And uh, by the way, you're on in Hamilton, TSN Radio Hamilton. Shout out to T. You're, you guys are affiliated there. Oh, yeah. Home, of, home of Martin Short. We're killing it. Yeah, you guys are crushing yeah. it in the hammer. Right? The, the, the Thai cats? <laughs> the tabbies, yes. Yes. That's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. I, I love Canada. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great town. Yeah. I've been to Nova Scotia, too. What? Why were you in, in I, Halifax? I took a, I took a, a bike uh, trip with my wife. Wow, why would you do that, Dan? <laughs> Have you been to Nova Scotia? Yeah, it's beautiful. It, I, love it, it. I loved it. I Atlantic thought it was Canada. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Peggy's Cove. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, a lot yeah. of Red Sox fans up there. Surprisingly, uh, I think they got a lot of. Uh, I think they got radio broadcasts from New England. So, oh, so you go it's... through there, and it's like Red Sox caps everywhere. Well, don't you land in Yarmouth or something? Well, you, you can fly. You can fly into Halifax. Right. I didn't go. I eventually got to Halifax. Oh, okay. Yeah, very nice. I didn't. I wanted to wait till the very end, and I got to <laughs> right. Halifax. You didn't, didn't want to. You know, you, that would be a little too too much culture shock to go right. The into Cabot Halifax. Trail is that? Uh, yeah, yeah, man, you made it. You're all over. You've been to more places in Atlantic Canada than I. Have. Yeah. Well, I love it. You don't. You left. Yeah, I did. I you turned your back. I abandoned on the whole country. <laughs> <laughs> I abandoned the whole country. Uh, so it's uh. It's kind of a sad life you're living now. Pretty much, yeah. They're closing up shop at Fox Sports 1? It seems that way. Or at least that's the impression we're trying to give people. And then to come back and maybe, you know, make some sort of grand entrance. No, but um, we're doing our show out of a closet. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. So that's interesting. You know, the worst part is uh, we had the World Cup, the Women's World Cup last year. And we said, are you going to send us to the, to the Women's World Cup? And they said, uh, no, we're not. But we're going to do a segment based on the fact that we're not going to send you to the World <laughs> Cup. 
<laughs> and the problem is, like, it was great. Like, we did a great job of it, and it was funny, and it was fun. So, of course, then it's like, okay, now we're never sending you to anything ever. We're just going to keep you here and ridicule the fact that you're not going. So to you were too good at you were you were not good enough to go. That's but right. You were too good at not going. So let's do it again. Exactly. So that's now we're in purgatory of never going to any events except for Sochi, where I saw you. Well, let's hold off on okay. how we saw each other because that one, <laughs> that one was a. All I'm going to say is, Julie. Stewart, Stewart Binks. Binks was involved. Yeah, I think Michelle Kwan might have been involved. That's right. And it was a sauna. But that's as, that's as far as that's I'm going to go with it. And during the break, I just gave him the opportunity to... Now, I don't have the authority, obviously, but I said, to, <laughs> I said to Jay, if I could take you and Dan and just... You had to be at ESPN by Monday. You had to uproot your life, leave Fox Sports 1, leave Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and you could go to ESPN right now. And you said... I'll take it. Yep, there you go. <laughs> But you said Fox Sports really loves you, so they would yeah. never let you go. Well, Eric Shanks were like children to him. Yeah. The president of Fox Sports were like his Canadian kids that he had on a relationship <laughs> a <previous> in college. <laughs> you know, he, he went up there on a trip to Niagara Falls, had a few too many Molsons, met a nice girl from Saskatchewan. Dan and I were the result. He brought us down here, and this is the life we're leading now. That would actually be a more interesting show than the show we're doing now, Dan. We could do like the tall show. Like yeah. Keith, Keith and I did the big show, but yeah. how, what are you, 6'3"? I'm 6'6", six, six, almost 6'6". Six, 6'6"? Six. Six, six. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. So we could do the tall show. That You're very tall. Like you're, you're, I'm sure everyone says that to you when they meet you in person. Yeah. You're taller than people expect. Well, the problem is, is when you're at the desk, I could be sitting next to Linda Cohn. Right. And it looks like we're the same height. Right. How tall is Linda? Like 4'8"? No, she's probably 5'4". Six, maybe five, right. five. Bill Pito was about five, four. Right. The judge. Yes. So, but, but Keith <laughs> Oberman was like six, four. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we we're about yeah. the same, same height. See, so. Dan's like, Dan O'Toole's like five, eight and a half. I know that exactly. <laughs> we, we filled it on a radio show in Canada and people were calling in like, you're five, two. You must be five, <laughs> one. So we actually had to, we actually measured him. He said he's five eight and a half. I'm six six. But as you pointed out, you know, you get behind that desk, you just even that baby out. So then we go out and do appearances in Canada and stuff. People will be like, "What is going? Are you his son? Are you his little boy? You have him in <laughs> put put him in your pocket, take him places." All right, I mentioned this prior to the break, and this kept you through the commercial break. I'm mm -hmm. sure is um, uh, I was in Sochi because NBC <laughs> where I work, we we were carrying the Olympics, and uh, Jay and Dan were there for Fox Sports One. You actually got to go. It was I. We they said, sent you to Sochi because we had just arrived, and and I said to Eric Shanks, "Can we go to the Olympics?" And he said, "Let me think about it." And the next day, he said, "Okay, go." We, we had nothing for us to do there, <laughs> so I, it was the goodwill. We burned it up in Sochi of all places. So I, I'm. Um, there's a workout room, and then there's a a sauna. And it's, they, they love their steam rooms. Oh yeah. So the Russians. Next thing I know, Jay, Dan, uh, Julie. Stuart Binks, yeah, and Michelle Kwan, who is our figure skating analyst. Yes, so we're in the sauna and steam room, and it was kind of weird to have a discussion with you. Although I noticed we didn't leave; like no. we stayed. But like the women left, and yeah. it was just us. Yeah, and having a philosophical discussion <laughs> about television. <laughs> And we've managed to have these beautiful women leave, and we yes. just stayed there. Yeah, I know. No reason for uh, for us to leave. I but mean, you gave us some great advice. You know, he said just stick with it. And uh, two and a half years later, uh, our careers are in the toilet. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I, my my thought is, you can't overtake ESPN in the span of a couple of years, right? And that's what Fox has done twice now. They've made the mistake of trying to go at them in a span of two or three years. It's the only way Fox does things, right? It's 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 all in or not, unless it's the the, the closet that we're doing the show out of. But right but now. your show it, it it doesn't have to be made up into you know hey look at what we have here we got a big screen and we got look at the fancy graph it's not a, it's about content yeah and what you guys have been able to do is provide content which is different than the anchors at ESPN and it says something about. Us, I suppose. That's that, when you say thank you, Dan. No, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but also to your point, we were probably more comfortable in that tiny prop closet yeah. last week than we ever were on that giant set. And a bunch of the guys on your crew here who worked with us on that giant set would probably agree. Like it's it we're just better in that intimate environment. It's our personalities are showcased that way. 
Um, you're right. The way we started the network with the giant set and Andy Roddick talking about football. God bless you, Andy. You know I love you. <laughs> Um, it, it was, it was, it was ill-conceived. The I crowd suppose. goes wild. Yeah. Well, I'll first of all, wasn't a crowd. We got Katie Nolan out of that. So that was good. She's very, Katie was, Katie's got great. A lot of talent. Yeah. Um, what else did we get out of that? We extended Regis's career for a year. <laughs> How was working with, did you understand Regis while being in Canada? Oh yeah. Regis is huge worldwide, oh, okay. as you know, Dan. And, um, <laughs> and, but the, the best part was like, we, we created like this faux rivalry. You know? Like it was like, what, what I'm going to be mad at the Canadians. Like that, that's my shtick now. So, so he, uh, he actually sent us uh, sort of as a, as a peace offering. He said he wanted to send us the most American present he, he could ever send us. So he gave us a, uh, a giant Texas Mickey of Jack Daniels, like a giant bottle of Jack Daniels and four apple pies from the apple pan here in Los Angeles, right by the Fox studios. What a beautiful gesture yeah. from that man. There's no way he had anything to do with that. That was surely it was the crowd goes wild PR people who put that together. But yeah, I mean, we threw some things at the wall at the beginning. They didn't stick. Uh, last week we had Jason Whitlock, uh, his party by the bay. Gronk did a lap dance on Julie Stewart Binks. Mm. That's what we'll be known for for yeah. last week, Dan. Yeah. So, <laughs> where are we? I don't know what's happening with our network right now. But I'll say this: we're gonna stick it out until this contract is over. We're gonna collect our money. Now, would you go back to Canada, <laughs> or would you? Are you guys? I, we'd love to stay here, to be honest. We, my wife and I, had a baby here eight months ago, American, so she could be president, Dan. I can't. <laughs> I can't leave now. I've got to let her see that through. Did you watch the game last night? Oh, yes, we did. In fact, um, my wife is Chinese, and we celebrated Chinese New Year. My mother-in-law came down from Canada. She cooked a 10-course Cantonese feast. So we had the whole shtick. It was fantastic. Watched the game. Thought it was terrific. Happy for Peyton. You know, I mean, I am. I don't understand all this stuff with Cam. What do you mean? The post-game, uh, the anger, the vitriol. I know what you're saying about... You know, you got to handle that a little bit better. But I love how real he is, you know. He's like, he's pissed off. He, he lost the biggest game of his life. It's fine oh, with me. Okay, is this just an American thing? Like, in, in, no. in Canada, would you guys... All, all, no, everyone's all upset in Canada, too. Everyone's mad at Cam for being for showing emotion, I guess. I don't know. I You know, what What? What do we want? We wanted him to say something conciliatory to, to Peyton, I even guess. If, even if he's mad. Yeah. I, I still would have preferred to hear him at least give me some thought. I guess so. That's but all. Because, like, he's, he's, he doesn't want to be there. He's dismissive to the media, who the media has been pretty kind to him, I think, for the most part. True. And but, then he didn't offer too much. So I, But I can't remember who brought it up. Like, the questions were not great. No, they, Fritzy brought that up. Yeah, Fritzy, you were right. The questions were not great. And then I kind of like that. Like, to me, if I'm a, if I'm a writer, if I'm a beat reporter... That, isn't that more interesting, writing about him doing that, walking out of the press conference, than him giving kind of boring, pat answers where he's like, well, good for Peyton, and we'll be back, and we've got a great team. <laughs> you know, it's, like, boring to me. I love that he's real, you know? Like, he's really pissed. He's an emotional guy. When he scores touchdowns, he's handing out footballs. When he loses, he's miserable. I like that about him. What did you think of uh, the endorsement opportunity for Peyton Manning <laughs> that he gets a kiss from Papa John's? Yeah, that was beautiful, wasn't it? That's sad. Yeah. That was sad. He got he got a kiss from Papa John's before his wife, <laughs> right? And, does and two John... Budweiser uh, references. So he owns, what, parts of two dis Budweiser he distribution will. outlets or something? He will. This is why he did this? He's so smart. I love that he did that. Who was the guy in the glasses right behind Peyton while Tracy Wolfson was interviewing him? I don't know if we can get a shot of him. There's Oh, there's Papa John right there. Papa John, give him credit. I mean, he's latched on to Peyton, and he's riding that all the way to the Hall of Fame. If he could have showered with the team last night, he would have. Big time. Right? He probably did. He probably did. He brought pizzas pre, in there. Pre- and post-game showers. <laughs> hey, guys, let's take another shower. <laughs> How about a halftime shower? <laughs> Hey, good luck with the rest of your career. Thank you very much, Dan Patrick. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll bring I'll bring O'Toole next time. No, not no. not necessary. No, okay. No, because you you killed it. You, Thanks, you don't man. need him. You, I you've don't. been carrying him. I have. You've been carrying. You're right. Yeah. It's like you and Keith all those years. He where's, carried where's me. Where's Keith now? Keith, yeah. What's Keith doing now? Keith carried. Now, did you guys were you referred to as the Dan and Keith or Keith no, and Dan? No, because we couldn't get ESPN in Canada, right? 
That's there, why you guys. Our socialist rules wouldn't allow us to bring out. Oh. So that's why so, you created TSN. Yeah. Well, and ESPN owns a third of TSN, so they would provide some programming. So you had no idea who I was. Oh, no, I did In fact, I told you this once, but you may not remember. You were on TSN more than me because TSN has Sunday Night Football, which you were on. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I think they might have simulcast this show for at least a cup of coffee, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so you were you were literally on my old network more than I was. God, I hate you, Dan. <laughs> But I, all along, I thought that, <laughs> like, you were me. Right. And then Dan was Keith. No, that's, that, no, that's a, it, whatever the opposite of Keith is, that's, that's what Dan is. So. Dan, short. Dan is me. Short, not, not, not. <laughs> Intelligent? <super> thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's watching this at home right now with a hangover like, you <laughs> son of a. After all these years, uh, J- sell me out. Jay wrote his lead in. He's the co-host of Fox Sports <laughs> Live on FS1 every night. Well, at least for a little while. Yeah. At 11 Eastern and the co-host of the Jay and Dan podcast available where good podcasts are downloaded for free. You also, want to be on the podcast this week, Dan? Yeah. Will you? Yeah. This Wednesday? What time? 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 Eastern. I'm going to be out here doing Sports Jeopardy. So when I'm done with Sports Jeopardy. Done. I'll do it. This is how you book podcasts. <laughs> is, yeah, absolutely. During the commercial break, I'm going to tell him no. But right here, I'm saying yes. Uh, it's a faux yes is what that is. He also wrote two books, Anchor Boy and Number Two, and he was not at the Super Bowl. And did you read two? Wait, you wrote two books. I did. Oh. Uh, I haven't read two books, but I did write two. And uh, it's Jay Onright, in, cl- in case you're wondering. It's not French. <laughs> You're not from Quebec. Well, it is French. It is. It, yeah. All right. Yeah, but but uh, we anglicized it when we came down here. <laughs> like that. I didn't want to confuse everyone. From the old country. That's right. Uh, thanks for coming in, It Jay. was a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Tell Dan me. I said hello. Thank you. I uh, will, for uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Give him my best. He's watching. This is the Dan Patrick Show.